Hello again, and welcome to this week's Tucson Sugar Skulls Coaches Show. I'm Jay Gonzalez here with head coach Dixie Wooten, here to talk about uh, last week's exciting victory against uh, and sort of a revenge win over the San Diego Strike Force, and to also talk about the game coming up this weekend, a big game rematch with the Northern Arizona Wranglers. So, Dixie, first uh, tell us how you, know, you walked out of there with a win. It wasn't easy. They never are. But, uh, you, you know, you guys came, came back 69-65. Um, talk, first, just talk to us a little bit about overall how you think your team performed on Saturday. Um, you know, um, Jay, at the end of the day, you know, when you win a road game, that's, that's always huge. So, you know, it, it's, it's big that we now we up, you know, close to second place in, um, in, the, in, in the conference. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, when, um, you know, our offense again played lights out. Daquan, you know, he started off a little slow, but, you know, he picked it up right away, left it. And, and after the first couple of drives, he just was the Daquan. You know, um, defensively, you know, we played decent. But the thing that killed us, Jay, was – on third downs, we either, we got a penalty. You know, we made a good stop, but we got a penalty to, to get them extra um, plays on the drive. And every time we got a penalty, they drove and scored a touchdown on the on the, on the drive that did we we didn't have any penalties. We stopped them. So you know, they, we we killed ourselves on a lot of things, and that's what we got to fix on defense. You know, we got to be smarter, and we got to understand on third downs. That's the time you get out the field with no penalties. So in the first half, uh, it was, was kind of like there were two different halves. The first half, you fell behind by 10 points twice, uh, managed to get some stops and uh, and got got yourself with uh, got a quick score right, th right there at the end of the half to get yourself within a within field goal. Then you got the ball right at the start of the second half and got got the lead. But tell us a little bit about the, the that that first half it was a little more of a struggle than than the second half. Um, you know, um, it was Daquan first game back. He was out there doing a lot of outdoor things, so he had to get back in the game. You know, yeah, the steps because it's a major difference. So mm -hmm. you know, but you know him, the MVP for a reason. You know, he got back into it and got got going good. You know, defensively, you know, we got some stops early, but again, like I say, the thing that hurt us big times it wasn't that they was doing something to beat us. We were just making we were just making um, dumb mistakes, especially you know with the penalties. So, you know, we got we definitely got to clean that up. But the great thing about it is it's something that we can fix. You right. know, you know, you all you got to do is just maintain, you know, understand what you have to do to be successful and don't cause the penalties and we get stops. And certainly those things are probably a little easier uh, to fix after a win than a loss because you feel yeah. a, a little bit better about yourself. So, um, you know, we, we talk a lot and, and Pat Paris and I on the on the broadcast, we spend a lot of time usually as we get to the end of the second half talking about getting that last possession of the first half, try mm -hmm. and get a score when you've got the ball coming back to you at the start of the second half. That seems to be a bigger deal than it is, let's say, in the outdoor game yeah. to, to get back to back possessions because it's like getting the stop. Tell us a little bit about your strategy to try to get to that point in this case. Uh, on Saturday, you got the you got the ball back with less than a minute left, but it, gave, it was enough time to go down and put a score on the board, uh, yeah. and and then get the ball back. Talk to us a little bit. Of how do you, how do you as the coach as you're managing the game, obviously with with uh, you know Hurtis uh, Chin, your offensive coordinator, to try and use enough of the clock so that you've got the last possession of the half. So so how it works, Jay. So um, you know, it's all about time management. You know, that's big in any football game, but here it's super important. You know, between that, the end of that half and the, and the first the beginning of the half, um, you know what we look at as you know we try to we, we it all depends on the you know when you defer at the beginning. If you defer, you can work it even better. Mm -hmm. But if you defer and and don't and don't get don't win the toss and you end up getting the ball, you got to work it a little differently. But when you win and defer, now you know that you're getting the ball back at the beginning of the, of the second half. So you want to what you want to do is try to score fast and then try to either get a stop or if another team score you want to go in with at least two timeouts and probably like 40 seconds on the clock mm -hmm. so you you want to have that on the clock so you want to score at the at the end of the first half so now like for us we was down 10 so we score at the end of the half we go down three then we get the ball back at the beginning of the half we score now we up four so right. it's, it's a two it's a two possession swing and it's huge in this game. Yeah, then that was the key to the game because you pretty much traded scores until you got down towards the end of the game. Then you got a huge stop from the defense. Uh, yeah. you, you you had uh, San Diego deep in their territory. Uh, you 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 got to stop you when you were up. You were up and and uh, again get, you know you, you were able to put the ball in and 
Now you're up two scores with just a few minutes left to play. Um, tell us a little bit about that last stop and what you got, what you think you guys did there because you had a couple of sacks and or, or we, tackles for loss. Jay, we didn't make mistakes. Like like <clears throat> that, that drive, we didn't have a penalty. You know, we um we played great coverage on the back end. We ran um with some zone coverage. Everybody was exactly where they're supposed to be. So it wasn't nobody open. And then it gave the, the defense a line time to get their pass rush. So we got a we got a sack on first down. We got an almost an interception on second down. Right. We got a, um a, 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 a we, we almost got another sack on third down. He got to throw it away. And then we had another a, a sack on fourth down. So, so when our guys doing exactly what they're supposed to do, we have a solid defense. It's just we have to stop making these bonehead um, mm -hmm. penalties on third down. Like right mm -hmm. now, Jay, as a coach, it 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 it, 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 it upset me big time that on third down we are the, we are leading the team in we are leading the lead in penalties on mm -hmm. defense. So how are you supposed to stop somebody when you have penalties on third down? When you make a play, you get an incomplete pass or a tackle for loss, you get a penalty. Right. So so that's that's the part that that we gotta we gotta fix or we gotta make some changes big time because that cannot happen and be a championship team. And then uh, you had another key special teams play when you recovered an onside kick that for a second looked like it was going to get away from you. It uh, it bounced it bounced off. I think it was Pedroza's hands, yeah. and then he then he fell back on it. Did your heart go up into your throat a little bit there on that one? What like when like the thing about it, Jay? When I saw it, it looked like he caught it right away. So when I looked at everybody else, I'm looking like why everybody's so nervous? He caught it. Like, nah, he bobbled. Yeah. But the thing about Pedroza, his hands are so soft. When he when when he barely touch it, he keep it close to him in in, in, his, in his radius where he can fall on it. That's why he's yeah. the guy that we put right there for that middle dribble. Right now, as I, as I mentioned, you know the second half was was different. You guys were just scoring every time you got the ball. Uh, Daquan looked like he he was a little more comfortable uh, back there and kind of back in the indoor football groove. What what, what did he do differently? So, uh, what, so, so at the, at the beginning, you know, when you come from an NFL camp, you know, everybody understand this. You, you try to do a little too much, you know, to, to, you know, to do a little too much. So he understood that, you know, he, he's going to take what they give us, you know, understand he, he, he going, if he got to run, he got to run the football. So in the second half, he was the corn. So, you know, he, he was efficient. He, he, he read the defense. He ran. And it was, it was when he, when he's in that, when he's in that vibe, Jay, it's hard to stop him, man. He 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 make it look easy, man. Right, he does. So you you, you got a big win. It was 60, 69, 65, Still a a close game. You guys are still scoring a ton of points, Dixie. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to ask you a question. It's going to kind of sound a little like um, uh, asking you to tell us, you know, who's your favorite kid? This offense. Have you ever had an offense like this? And no. that, that 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 has done this kind of thing, game in, yeah. game out. I know you. You know, the week before, you know, you didn't score a lot of points. You had a new quarterback, but with Daquan back there, you guys are putting up 65, 70 points a game. What's I'm, I'm not asking what's been the key to that. We know what the key is to it, but what's it like to have that kind of an offense? Man, you know, when uh, we when I first started recruiting the team, Jay, you know, all these guys on offense, I, I, I you know, either played for me before or I saw them on another team. Like the corn has played for me um, as my quarterback. Pedroza played with me before in Iowa. You know, um, you know, um, CT, um, um, Cantor Thompson, I, I've been seeing him playing for like the last five years places. Um, Arthur, he's brand new. Like um, Coach Chen did a good job of picking him up from Vegas when they released him. Mm -hmm. You know, Mike Jones played for us last year. You know, um, Cordell played for us last year. And um, um, Isom been playing for me for like four or five years. So these guys have big time experience. But the thing about it is, Jay, is Carrington been first team all lead. Daquan been the MVP. Um, Pedroza was um, first team all lead. So these guys understand the game big time. But the most important thing is these guys understand, like, they, 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 they work hard every play. So having all these guys are all basically an all-star team on offense that these guys can count 40, 30, 30, 20 touchdowns in a season. And for those guys to be on one offense, it's dangerous, man. And like I said, we can run the football. We can throw the football. We can do whatever we want to do. And Coach Jen is doing a great job putting these guys in, in a situation, man, to be successful. Tell us a little bit about the development of Carrington Thompson because he was he was sort of like – 
the last guy to, to sort of develop among your three receivers who are getting all the catches. Um, he, he's come along. He's a, a big, tall kid, uh, a lot of range, long arms. Uh, how has he come along this year for you guys? Huge. You know, it's, 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 it's him being a part of a, diff, a new system. So he had to catch on to the system. But now, you know, he's our guy that we get we, we, we put on our deep threats. If you don't have nobody over the top of him, he's going to get over the top of you and, and beat you deep. But the great thing about him is he can run the jet sweep. He can, you know, he can catch the hitch. You know, like like Carrington is, is a huge part of our success because at the end of the day, you see him when he get over the top of you, it's over. Right, right, and then he's again, and then you, I mean, you got this receiving core that you know. I, I mean, you got a bunch of guys. But you got three guys who, when, when you've got three guys out there who can catch the ball the way they can catch the ball, for DeQuan Neal, that's got to just he's got to lick his chops when he's when he sees that out there. Three guys running around out there who can he can throw to any one of them and feel good about that. Right, big time, you know. And then the crazy part is, um, we got Raheem Harvey here as our fourth. He was the um, most improved player of the year, and he won a championship with me in Iowa. And now mm -hmm. we're in um, talks with um, Jazari um, Peterson. So you know, he he played with me in Iowa. And now he was here with, was last year. So we are deep at um at, at receiver, and like anybody, any one of those guys can step in and be big time for the corn. And that's what you want to have. Like you know, at the end of the day. We struggle on defense a lot, and we, we're getting better, but we got to get them pins. But when we have an offense like this, you got a chance to get better as the season go. So that that's that's the important part. So these guys are playing on a high level, and as soon as we get it on defense, Jay, we're going to be a tough, tough team. Well, then you've got Mr. Reliable, Mike Jones, who's, you know, yeah. you know headed for the Sugar Skulls Hall of Fame, right? He's, Absolutely. He's been around all this time, but, you know, you got a guy like him who you can just hand it off to, and he also gets the job done, had a couple yeah. of touchdowns. Uh you know, when, when you've got that those kinds of weapons, I mean, do you just basically feel we're going to score every time we get the ball? Absolutely. And and that's and that's the thing. That's why, you know, sometimes on defense, you know, we, we try to play a little man coverage, you know, because of the fact that, you know, we want to stay close to these receivers. But we know at the end of the day that, you know, our offense, you know, that that's the reason I built it like that, Jay, because I mm -hmm. knew that we I, I couldn't find these veteran DBs and things like that. So I had to get a make sure I had an offense that can score every drop. So our and, offense, when they step on the field, they big time, man. You can run the football. With you, it's crazy. You can run with Mike Jones, but when you try to try to stop Mike Jones, the corner's in the run game. Mm -hmm. And if you try to stop the corner, we can run jet sweep with the receivers. So right. you 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 have to do a lot to try to stop our offense. So uh, we saw Cam Gaddis came off the came off with an injury. How's he doing? He's doing okay. You know, he just just got his foot rolled over, so okay. he's in treatment right now. So he 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 he's, he'd be pretty good. Okay, didn't didn't look good from the from the the, the broadcast, but uh, you, you, yeah. you'd hate to see him get out there for a game and, and get hurt right away. So, uh, your defensive backfield again showed some more improvement, or how, yeah. what? What did you think? It, like deep, like if when you look at the film, Jay, defense plays solid. It was just it's just on third down we had a third and ten, Jay, that we got a penalty on. We got an incomplete pass. It got a penalty, so they gave him another drive. You know, it was um, another third down in the red zone. We stopped them, but we got another penalty. And then right. another third. It was like it was like seven third downs, Jay, that we got penalties on, and that that can't happen anymore. Like right. that 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 comes from undiscipline, and I, that's something I don't teach. So um, and that's something that's not I'm not going to deal with. Right, right. All right. So uh, look, you know the the league is kind of wide open all of a sudden. Yeah, uh, the yeah. the Rattlers have lost two out of three. I think you maybe set them off on a on a bad uh, on a on a bad streak by beating them a couple of weeks ago. But everybody's got at least two losses. You guys are you guys are five and four with uh, one more game before your bye. Um, you know, do, does that enter into your mind at all in terms of? You know, things have, are opening up for us. We've got a chance not only to, you know, to to you know maybe make a playoff run, but maybe even win your division. I mean, do you right. get to thinking about that at all at this point and put that in front of the guys, or just kind of let's just go along, and take them one at a time? What do you What do you think? So to be honest, Jay, I look at it, and I, you know, I look, I look in the future a little bit, and I see, I see what it looked like. But with my guys, I go one game at a time. Mm -hmm. You know, because like I said, we have four losses for a reason. So we don't need to jump up to games 10, 11, 12, right. 13 when you got four losses. 
So you need to, we need to, we need to make sure we understand what we got to do for that week. And then, you know, we'll get ready for the next week. But, you know, me as a coach, I definitely look at it as, you know, an opportunity to, you know, jump up in that standings. We just got to take care of business. And I, I feel like right now, you know, we just got to make a few tweaks here and there. And the great thing about it, Jay, is week 10, we come out with another home game and then we get a bye week. So now these guys get the rest up because we've been straight from camp to 10 games straight. So mm -hmm. now we get the rest. We get to, you know, get back, you know, lick our wounds as a coaching staff, understand what we need to get better, you know, to, to make this championship run. So then we come back and we get to have another home game after that bye week. So we're in a good situation, Jay, to run the table. We just got to make sure we practice our tails off and get ready. Right. So you got the Wranglers again, again this Saturday. You just played them a couple of weeks ago. Um, well, a week and a half ago now. But, uh, you know, when, when, you, when you face a team three times now, what are coaches going through in terms of trying to figure out what to do against you know, against an opponent that they're obviously pretty familiar with? Now, the last time you saw the Wranglers, you didn't have Daquan Neal, so they've only right. seen him once. Right. What's going through your mind in terms of what your preparation will be about uh, with the Arizona Wranglers, and and you know, what, you know, what can you do to kind of keep them off uh, off balance? So with with, the, with those guys, when you play each other three times, best you know everything that that each other's going to do. And so it, my thing is, you know, you can add a, a tweak here and there, but both teams know what they do good. So you know, so now it's come down to, you know, making sure you in the right place, no penalties. You know, make sure you understand what you're doing to be successful, and it should be a dog fight. But you know, one thing about it is, with our offense, you know, we we do different things every week. So right. you have to you have to adapt to what we do, and then you got to figure try to figure out what we do. You know, with um, Northern Arizona, they come out and play their type of football. You know, the first game we played our type of football shootout. You know, um, they came and, and they played their type of football, the 30, 35 to twenty one. That's how that's the type of game they want to play. So now we got to make them play our game, but also as a defense, come out and stop those guys so they can try to make some mistakes trying to play catch up with our offense. Right. Well, you got him in your place. Last time you had him here, you put 72 on him, uh, beat him 72 62. So, uh, is, how much, how conducive is that to helping you play your kind of game? It's big time because now, you know, um, in, the, in the last two games, you know, Northern Arizona on offense, they, they, they basically did the same thing. You know, they do what they do good. You know, they run the ball, you know, run jet sweeps, you know, try to um, get their quarterback, in, you know, in, in space and things like that. So, we just got to come out and stop what they do good because we know our offense can put up points with anybody. So right. we got to do we got to do our job defensively to make sure that we stop these guys to make sure we go up 14, 21, and they got they they got to chase because mm -hmm. if you try to chase our offense, it's tough. Good luck with that, right? Good luck with that. So it's a military appreciation day uh, this oh, yeah. this Saturday, uh, six o'clock game at the at the Boneyard. You got Northern Arizona coming in. Tell us a little bit about. But something like that means to you, Dixie, with a, a Military Appreciation Day. So uh, what, what it means to me, Jay, it's a huge thing because when, when I'm at home, you know, in my coach's office, I pass by United, United States flag every day from my grandfather. You know, um, he, he he have it in my, I have it in my um, my trophy case, and it's important because you know my my grandfather fought and, and gave his life for for this country. You know, and that let me know that you know it's giving me the opportunity to do some things that I probably couldn't do in, in any other country. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I, I appreciate that from my grandfather, of course, but from every other vet and for people who serving right now, you know, it, it's a great thing for us to have it because of the fact that it give us, it give us a chance to say thank you and out and, and, and out on our form. Mm -hmm. So, so, you know, and so at the end of the day, like I want to say thank you to all the military vets and, and the people that's in the military. Now I want to say, you know, thank you to the families that, that gave like, like they, they loved ones to the military that passed on, you know, I want to show my appreciation through the football game. And, you know, we have all the type of jerseys that we have, you know, to just to show, show the whole thing that it's all about military. And we want to show our appreciation because if it wasn't for the, for, for the military, you know, keeping us safe, we wouldn't, we wouldn't know what, what could go on in the United States. States. Right, right. Yeah, so it's important that we have this game, and and I'm 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 proud of it. Yeah, well, hopefully we get a a, a big crowd, maybe biggest of the year. It's a Memorial Day weekend, so you got an extra yeah. night off. So, got to get the fans out there, Dixie. It's it's hot, it's too hot outside to be outside too. <laughs> but it, got, it should be in the arena. So man, so 
Just come on, have fun with them. Telling you, if you come to the game, Jay, you're gonna be hooked, and you don't want to go nowhere else. Yeah, absolutely, hundred percent agree with you, Dixie. All right, Dixie, well, good good luck. The uh, the Northern Arizona Wranglers here, six o'clock uh, Saturday night at the Boneyard uh, Military Military Appreciation Day. So we'll be honoring the uh, honoring all of our military, our vets, and, and and active duty members, and hopefully we'll get a good crowd for that. Dixie, thanks again. Good luck, and uh, we'll see you on Saturday. I appreciate it, Jay.